Hi everybody! So, as Game of Thrones just nabbed its third consecutive Emmy for Best Dramatic TV Show, we have moved into a new phase in the not so illustrious history of this award show. But before we move forward, I would like a word from our sponsor. Our sponsors are our patrons. Thank you patrons for sustaining the channel. Even though this has been a long off season, we keep churning out videos thanks to you. So back to our topic. In the past, the Emmys have proved themselves to be irrelevant by ignoring some of the best pieces of art the small screen has ever seen, like The Wire, Deadwood, and more. But now it seems that the Emmys are actively undermining quality TV and are basically working against us viewers living in this golden age of TV. It is sometimes odd that in this golden age, quantity trumps quality and spectacle trumps storytelling. Could TV be coming down with the same malady that brought the movie industry to a situation that it can only produce sequels and prequels and spin-offs that are obsessed with one-upping themselves with bigger and better special effects? Well, all this will happen if the Emmys have anything to do with it. When season 5 won the Outstanding Drama Series Award, one could kind of shrug and say that it was the TV industry's way of congratulating itself and that this was more an award for the entire show than for this specific season. And seasons 1 through 4 were more than deserving to get the credit, but season 5 had lower ratings and some of its episodes were downright weak. Maybe I'll come visit you sometime. Maybe I'll come visit you. Don't wait too long. Got a noble woman to marry back home. You want a good girl, but you need a bad pussy. Maybe because there were no more of his books to rely on. Season 6 was mostly forgettable, but for its last two episodes. Episode 9 of season 6, The Battle of the Bastards, might be in the top 5 best episodes ever shown on TV. <laughs> And the season finale, The Winds of Winter. Miguel Sapochnik directed both these episodes, and the season got its second gold medal. It is somewhat perplexing as the first eight episodes didn't leave any mark on us viewers. But one could say that maybe the effects of these two outstanding episodes seal the deal. Okay. But season seven, come on, come on, come on. Episode four was intense and really well done. Episodes one through three were somewhere between okay and good. And don't get me started with episode six. Oh. <sighs> okay, so if we try to think positively, this award for this specific Game of Thrones season is a slap in the oh. face to the show's fans. So this is the best case scenario, a slap oh. in the face. I'm trying to look at the glass half full here, people. Please appreciate it. Many viewers were up in arms after watching some of these episodes. And the evidence is laid out in the comment section of season 7 episode reviews or on the comment section of any Game of Thrones featurette. Now let's be a little bit less kind and look at the glass half empty. What the Emmys actually did was widen the gap between the viewers and the show. The Emmys are telling us that we're idiots, that we don't know what we're talking about, that this season was remarkably written and we couldn't recognize good TV if a dragon attacked us from within it. We should just turn on the TV and shut up. And this is basically what the two co-creators of the show, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, they love it when we are invested in the characters in the story to post videos about it on YouTube, to post reaction videos, discuss it in forums or on social media, except if we have something critical to say about their choices, mm, then, they just, then they just want us to get real, to go away, 
and let the HBO checks keep coming in the mail. Some hardcore fans have been disillusioned with the show, and even a lot of run-of-the-mill show watchers were less enthused by season 7 than by any of the previous seasons. D&D have been quick to dismiss any criticism offhand with ridiculous arguments like the way you feel as a viewer about certain scenes and characters doesn't make sense, it's not logical, and let us explain to you exactly why you should have actually cared more about a character you didn't know who got raped or murdered, uh, unless you're some kind of hypocrite? Hmm? Why is Arya's or Sansa's well-being more important to you than that of some tavern wenches, huh? Uh, of course, unless you care about, say, a Hodor dying more than about a red shirt dying, and then you're not a hypocrite and it's awesome and credit to them. Or they would say stuff like, you know, life in medieval times was hard and tough and things happened. Hmm? So basically we can show and do whatever we want regardless of character development and we can shield ourselves from any criticism because rape and treachery always existed. So it doesn't matter if you think our specific choices were wrong. Hmm? You are wrong. And now with the third straight Emmy, the TV industry is just reinforcing <laughs> this very annoying way of thinking by telling them your three best seasons are the ones not based on the books by him. Mm. Season 8, the show finale, is already deep in the oven and this award will not affect its quality. But this win sends a strong message to all showrunners and producers out there. You don't have to work hard on the story if you have a big budget to spend on CGI dragons and, and on dozens of extras. But not all TV shows have the tremendous luck to be set in a world that someone like him created. So it remains to be seen if more such extravagandas will be produced in the future. But this victory could bode ill for the quality of the future shows set in the Game of Thrones world. HBO prides itself for letting showrunners do their thing, but they might put their thumb on the scale in favor of more razzle-dazzle instead of character and dialogue for the upcoming shows. And with so many HBO shows in recent years failing to meet expectations, the dragons are what keeps the TV corporation going. And now that it is owned by AT&T, hmm? We could be in for a disappointment on the spin-off front as well. George Martin loves to say that he likes the quote by William Faulkner that the only thing worth writing about is the human heart in conflict with itself. The good people who vote for the Emmys think differently. Hmm. They think that the only story worth writing about is a giant pile of money. Let's hope that they are wrong and he is right. And I would really like to get your thoughts and take on that in the comments. Okay, everybody, I'll wrap it up. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Am I overblowing it? Do you agree? Disagree? Let me know and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.